Welcome, everybody. It's February 18th, 2021. We are here for a uh, regularly scheduled new market uh, school board meeting. We'll start the meeting, as we always do, with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, Can we move right with, Yes, yeah, with, a, with the board's uh, uh, consent, I'd like to move up the uh, acceptance uh, of box top donations with uh, Ree and, and Maverick is joining us online. Hi, Maverick, how are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> so is, is Ree there too? Or? Yeah, she's in the background. Yeah. So, so Ree, could you take it away and explain to us uh, again uh, the, the box top program? Sure. Um, the box tax program is something that Link Together has done for a long time. Um, and even though we didn't have Link Together this year with the COVID, um, we had box tops that came in from last year. And usually we also have money from the store. But again, we didn't have the store. But I have been researching. And when we do reopen up, uh, hopefully in the fall, um, we will be, um, I've got little puppets and, and um, some finger puppets and some regular puppets and a whole bunch of other things that we can add just to the the store that the kids do so that they're also working on money skills and math skills and making change and that kind of thing at the same time, um, raising money for the playground, which we we'll use me. each afternoon. <laughs> and then speech for you. Go ahead, Mav. Hello, I am Maverick. Link Together has a check for 52, uh, what is this? $52. $52 from BoxCast to go towards the playground fund. We do not have any money from a store this year because we were closed and didn't have a store. And may you get still thank, thank you for all the work that you do. I hope that you like them. These are the gifts yeah. from, from Maverick. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Maverick. The, these gifts are beautiful, and thank you so much for, for You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> gathering all those box tops. I know that's a lot of work, and that was a great speech, yeah. too. Thank you. It took, like, forever to get that much. Yeah, I bet it did. <laughs> thank you so much. So we're gonna, what we're going to do right now, Maverick, is we'll just take a motion as a board to accept your, your generous donation. I seek that motion. I'll, I move to accept the generous donation from Maverick. I second any further comment? Thank you, Maverick. Thank you, Maverick. You're welcome. Thank you. All those aye. in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is accepted. Thanks, Maverick. Take care. Good job. Okay. <laughs> say goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. We stop there, I guess. Any good? Any good? Um, so uh, next next up on the agenda is public comment. I haven't received any, Susan, you? I have not. Okay. Do we have anybody online? Nobody online, okay. So um, first on our agenda, uh, re report agenda tonight is to introduce our new facilities director, uh, Devin, Devin Lockley. Um, Devin, uh, we welcome you to New Market and uh, uh, you couldn't come soon enough. We, uh, we need you. So um, Jana's gonna do an introduction and, and and uh, go from there. Thank you, Jana. Well, thank you very much. Um, tough act to follow. <laughs> um, so as Mike mentioned, we can, uh, could not be more delighted to have Devin Mockley on board. Some of you had a chance to meet him in our office. Um, I'd just like to open up to him um, to tell you a little bit about the background. He comes from the district with some really incredible technical skills and um, Thanks for having me. Um, really excited to be here. So, um, I moved into town two and a half years ago. That was really the second position as facilities director and moved to college and actor. So, all that time I've been thinking back and forth with my own story. I'm on the corner of the street and I'm very excited. So, this has been a welcome, welcome message to me. I'm not going to get the car. I'm not going to get the car. 
Uh, can you hear? It? Oh, yeah. there it is. Yeah. Okay. Prior to that, um, I was at Northfield Mount Hermon School for 11 years, and I was project manager and assistant director of facilities at that school. Um, I carry a, um, a master's license and a journeyman's license in the state of New, uh, Massachusetts. I haven't reciprocated to New Hampshire yet. I should, and I will. Um, I did many, many projects. I was also a wiring inspector for the town of Northfield, and I taught <clears throat> uh, code for at a community college at night for uh, masters and journeyman electricians so they could take the test in the state of Massachusetts. Prior to that, moving there, I lived on Nantucket Island for 25 years and had my own contracting business as an electrician. So I've gone around and done quite a few things. So done some really fascinating projects, a lot of fun. Did a lot of buildings, um, managed quite a bit diverse things after I got out of the electrical field. Um, I did capital budget for the uh, uh, Northfield Mount Hermon School for their capital projects during the summertime when we could get those done because it was very busy. Um, I was actually, uh, I managed a uh, 1.2 million um, generator for the whole campus. That was a, really a lot of fun. It was a great project. I enjoyed that a lot. So that's my background. That's where I come from. Um, really like it here. Love the town. We are very happy to be in this town. Just wonderful people. Great place. So thank you. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Welcome. So good to have you. Thanks. Deanna, your um, update on facilities? Yeah. Yeah, thank you again. Um, so we haven't had a chance to, we've been so busy with our budget and all those things, I thought it might be a nice time with our facility director coming on to kind of update you on some of our facilities related matters, which have been ongoing, but um, you know, have taken a back seat uh, as far as what we've been doing. So um, as Michael spoke to at one of the last meetings, uh, the building com project has been incredibly successful. It's winding down on, you know, for our two schools. Um, there are a couple of lingering things that um, we're just buttoning up, but as Mike said, we're, we hope to be bringing, bringing this to a close relatively soon, bringing a final report to the board, um, and kind of celebrating this really big moment for, for Newmarket. A lot of people have put a lot of work into this project, and there's so much to be proud of. Um, so, unfortunately, COVID has made it so it's hard for us to showcase some of the facilities like we would like to, but um, we certainly can um, move that forward and celebrate that as a community. I think that's a great thing. Um, I also wanted to make you aware of, um, we have recently completed our um, water testing. Uh, a few years ago, the state uh, Senate Bill 247 required that all schools test every faucet and or place where a child might put their mouth to get a drink uh, for lead. It's a big push in the state, um, one of their efforts to minimize lead testing. So I'm pleased to report we had that testing done this fall. Every, um, every site that was tested, tested below the level that required remediation, which is great news. Um, there is some funding coming down the road that we might be able to use to address um, levels that were higher than five parts per million, but lower than the, the recommended remediation level. And as always, we will be looking forward to um, taking advantage of that funding if we can to even further reduce lead levels in the town. So a report will be coming out. Um, uh, I think Dr. Gibbons will be sending something out, letting him know that's completed. The lead test results are available um, for public view. Um, and we'll have that available to them, in, um, information about how for people can check on that if they wish to. Um, so I guess those are kind of the two things I was gonna talk about. I think I'm gonna turn it over to Devin, who's had kind of a trial by fire in the last couple of weeks. We have gone through a whole lot of um, uh, projects that have kind of been queued up and ready to roll, and uh, we're moving forward with those. We'll be bringing a bunch of things to you in the form of an RFP coming shortly, but. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Devin to kind of give you the highlights, high-level overview of some of the things that we have going on, which is pretty exciting. We're moving a lot of things forward. So I will once again turn over to Devin. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the buildings, I'm uh, uh, very impressed with the elementary and the high school buildings, uh, junior high school. They're, they came out really nice and uh, really good looking, great stuff. Um, with that being said, there were a couple of pieces that uh, needed to be uh, repaired in terms of uh, uh, air, air duct issues, so um, out of this in the very beginning part, we've identified and it's going to start on Monday, 
um, sealing of the air ducts over in the elementary school. I guess there are three components over there that have been problematic. So that starts on Monday and should, um, from the, con I talked to the contractor today, it's gonna take them the week. Um, I'm hoping to get them wrapped up and done by Monday and Tuesday of the week after. Not disturbing anybody to be able to take care of those. Still identifying other pieces, um, getting my head around uh, a lot of the pro uh, what the project was, all the other things that go, but right now for the um, immediate, the POs that are there, we're taking care of the duct work. Um, oh, next up, sorry. RFPs, so you will see um, Jen and I sat down and uh, wrote some uh, RFPs, so you'll see a few of those that are going to come across. Um, they are going to be for completion of some of the uh, continuing pieces of third floor kitchenette at the SAU. Um, and there is a, um, another piece that's going to go on at the annex. Um, from what I understood, that the annex was put together to be able to make um, office space for people, which has been completed. But I think during the investigation of when that, that was uh, being put together and noticed as they were finishing that a few other items came up. So we're putting that RFP out to you for you to be able to look at that so we can go complete that project. And pretty much in a nutshell, that might be the RFP. Great, and just for everybody's memory, like locally it's called the, it's called the Perkins Building. That's the second name for it. We've been calling it the annex lately. Okay. It used to be an insurance <laughs> business, what, four or five years ago. Yeah. You know, they moved, but it was that. So if you ever hear it called the Perkins Building, that's why. Okay. Are we are we going to refer to it as? You, that's 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 above my pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> so we, the, the annex is fine. You know, the, it's the Perkins Building on the Carpenter property. <laughs> Great, <long> obviously. <laughs> so now if somebody mentions that, we'll know what they're talking, they're about. talking about. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Thank perfect. you. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. The, the second phase of the project is the exterior. So the first phase was the interior, oh. but the exterior roof needs to be replaced and, you know, siding and all kinds of other challenges with the building envelope. So the second phase is, is, is about addressing those issues. There's no sense in having people move in and, and have a roof leak on their head. So, um, so it's to, it's to secure, you know, secure yep. the, the exterior. So it's, it's all set. That'll, that'll be it. So the other thing that, you know, public might see next week if they're in town is they're going to be, they may see some trucks out there, going to be stalling the so-called sound attenuators on a couple of units. We've, we've got those in. We're just waiting for school. Yeah, I suppose they, they scheduled it then. They didn't know we were going to be out for, you know, for the pandemic reasons. But um, so they're going to do that next week, and that should take care of the, uh, any sort of residual sound issues that, were, that we were experiencing. And, and that, that'll be part of the final walkthrough to sort of see how that all worked out. Um, that's what those trucks are all about next week. Right? That's all. Any, anything else worth noting or we're, we good? Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice yep. meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. You're yep. welcome. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, you Thank as you. well. All right. So um, on the action items, we have uh, minutes from the February 2nd meeting, uh, public and non-public. Um, and the uh, Actually, I'm sorry. The, I can't even see. February 2nd is just the, that was the deliberation meeting. And then February 4th are the public and non-public minutes. Um, I'd seek a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Any um, edits or changes? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those, minutes aye. Are, those minutes are approved unanimously. Um, and then who has the manifest? I uh, make a motion we approve the manifest of February 18, 2021, totaling six hundred and thirty-eight thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight dollars and seventeen cents. Second. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Aye. Unanimous. I've got to get used to that delay over here. Um, so Susan, we uh, number four. We have several coaching nominations, and those um, those pages are in our in our materials. The yep. Coaches, you yep. Want to go over those real quickly. Or I can find them. So every um, season, the board policy um, requires that we bring these before the board for approval. 
So some are um, repeat performances from prior years and some are new. And um, the amount of the stipend associated with um, the, the role is included in your packet. I'm not going to read through each of these. But what you have um, is a recommendation from the high school principal for what would be um, coaching stipends uh, awarded for the winter season. I'm happy to read the names if you yeah, would like me to do so. Packet. So Jamie Hayes for the varsity basket, boys basketball. Um, Austin Manor, uh, JV boys basketball. Again, we're not running JV, but if you remember when we approved athletics for the winter, the JV was going to be the second um, coach to help support the varsity. So even though it says JV, it's, it's to support um, the varsity. Uh, Megan Averill, uh, varsity basketball coach. Um, Megan Fior, the JV girls basketball coach, who is the, again, varsity co uh, coaching uh, there. Nicole Benson, the varsity swim and dive team coach. Uh, Blake Neary, the varsity indoor track coach. And that uh, rounds out our uh, recommendations for coaches for the winter. I just had a quick observation, Susan. It might have been a typo as I was flipping through these. If you if you look at uh, Coach Hayes, he's four, salary's four thirty three three four thousand three thirty three. Miss Abel's is four thousand thirty three. It looks like the other assistant coaches are the same. I don't know if that was. Oh yeah, it must be a typo. It service, it's no? just a typo. Yeah. Just a typo. Yep. I had a question about salaries too. I'm looking They're the at, same. They uh, should. Benson's for, well, the, the varsity swim and dive coach, hers is $816. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you know, how we would address that or budgetarily, but I think it's something we need to consider mm -hmm. that we have equity in the coaching. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there are different responsibilities and all those things, but I think we need to look at it. Length of season mm -hmm. and meets and yep. practices and all that. I mean, that. and it may be that that's the, the, the correct number. Yep. Um, and that's fine, but I think we need to take a look at take it. Take a at review some point. of the stipends. Mm -hmm. Yep. school I believe has had a couple of swim meets this mm -hmm. year at the Dover pool just out of interest they they're not really meet so much as they have like kind of time trials they don't even have blocks of it the the, 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 the point is is they, they have been able to get together a couple of times right. and, yeah. and um, I know that I know that Nicole has been sort of you know very, keeping very in close contact with the team doing dry land mm -hmm. monitoring their training and all that stuff so uh, so yeah so that's the only thing I saw on these is just that type of on Miss Abel's page. I will attend to that tomorrow morning. Um, okay. Any questions? Um, hearing none, would I uh, entertain a, a motion to approve those coaching positions? So move. I'll second. Um, if there's no further questions, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimously. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we have the policy review. Who's taken that lead? Susan, I was thinking maybe I'll do the first one and if you could do the rest of them. Sure. And just so the board knows, we met um, February 3rd, I think, wasn't it? Second or third, to review some of the policies. Um, Amy and Susan and I had sort of talked about the way to go about the policy, it's making sure that we are, are addressing policies that pertains to operational goals, not just arbitrary things. So that's where we're starting. There were some requested by the um, auditors that came before. So one of the things that Amy had raised um, in the spring, maybe, or maybe the summer, was the, the, the uh, fee that we paid for, for uh, substitute teachers. And Susan did a study and discovered that our rates were $70 for non-certified staff and $75 for cert certified staff per day. And that the local amounts range from seventy dollars to one hundred five for non-certified, and eighty to one hundred five for certified. And we talked about it, and we are going to recommend that we amend that policy to increase our rates to eighty dollars for non-certified and ninety dollars for certified per day. Susan, will you take the fiscal ones? Sure. So, as a separate item, so the policy we did review the actual policy. And the policy just says we'll periodically review the rates. 
So there's no actual recommendation to change the policy. Um, and that's why on, on the agenda there appears a second item that says approval of sub rates. So I just wanted to, to clarify you. why there's two, that there's two sections um, for that one particular item. So there is no recommendation for any changes to policy GCG. Um, also annually um, we're, the board it's a very interesting policy to uh, or RSA to have that the board's required to review your investment policy annually. Um, and so there's no recommended change to that policy either, but you still have to do a reading and review. Um, the next, uh, so that would be DFA investment, uh, no recommended changes. The next uh, item listed is C, which is DID, fixed asset, fixed and capital assets and um, as you know from the audit that was uh, presented a couple of meetings ago, uh, the auditors recommended that we revise this. Um, and so it's been updated based on current RSAs and accounting practice. Um, uh, and they've reviewed it. Uh, everyone's reviewed this. And uh, so the changes are as presented. Some of it's reorganizing it because it was, it, you know, it would talk about, you know, capital assets, then fixed assets, then capital assets, and fixed assets. So this kind of reorganized some sections of it so that it would read about capital assets and then fixed assets instead of going back and forth to make it easier for the reader. So those um, recommended changes are redlined in the document itself so that you can see that. The next uh, is actually a procedure. So uh, procedure administration does in order to implement your policy. So the recommendation is to withdraw the procedure, though the subcommittee, the subcommittee did review the procedure and the procedure now aligns with this policy that's presented. And so as we're going through these, um, we'll, you know, follow that same uh, process, that if it's a procedure that we will be taking it out of policy um, because things change all the time and you don't want to have to keep coming back. In other words, the schedules, I'll give you an example. The schedules can change, right? In other words, if it says an asset uh, of this particular type, the threshold is 25000 but the practice in the in the accounting recommendations to make that 35,000, then that's just something that we would do. If we get a different software or, you know, um, something is modernized, we don't have to come back and constantly come back and have you approve forms. I mean, that's all about procedure, not about policy. So I just wanted to give a shout out on that. So that's the reason for recommending withdrawing DID-R. Uh, e is, uh, BCB, which is Board Conflict of Interest, there is no, again, this one hadn't apparently, perhaps it was reviewed, but it wasn't documented as being reviewed. And when the yes. auditor, yeah. they said they flagged that because it wasn't noted. Okay. So just so that there's no question whatsoever, it's, it's brought forward. Um, it has been reviewed. It is recommended to have no changes there either. And then uh, the last one, uh, EB dash, uh, the Joint Loss Management Committee. It's recommended by the uh, New Hampshire State um, Association of School Boards to withdraw that. There is some redundancy in policies that they recommend, and they have been going through their recommended policies and identifying when they have a policy that's identical in two places. Um, and so this is the one they're uh, asking school boards to uh, re withdraw. Um, and there's another policy that's identical to this that we have as well. So it's just to take redundancy and confusion away so that if people are looking for, for a policy on joint loss management, there's not two policies in place titled and numbered differently. So that's what that's about. I see. And Gary, just so you know, what happens with this is this is the first reading of it. Yep. We go through it. You can ask any questions tonight, or if you have, if you think any of the next time, it'll be on the next agenda. Mm -hmm. As, assuming that everyone agrees to them, we'll vote on them and approve them, and that would be the date they're accepted. Great. It's a, not a real reading, but a, what they call a reading of. So, sure. yeah. <coughs> so if there's any questions or thoughts, um, suggestions, uh, let us know, and we can modify or discuss it, and if necessary, modify. 
for the final reading. The other thing I, I wanted to give an update on is we've been doing, you know, I mentioned previously that um, we're not done with the website, right? Uh, it looks like much of the outward facing or the essential items had been updated, um, but there's many backside pieces that, that we've been working on, and one of them is a complete um, uh, restructuring of policy um, so that they're searchable, there's table of contents, that's easily accessible, that everything's in the same format. You know, if, if somebody wants to print it, they print it, it has our name on it, so it's not just random uh, documents that, that don't have any identifying information for us. Um, page numbers, you know, so that if we are talking, you know, we can say it's on page X because we have 600 and something pages worth of policy. So we're hoping to go live and, and bring that up, you know, maybe sometime around April. It's been a huge, huge undertaking going back and ticking and tying and trying to make sure we've got the right and most current policy and then purging random policy documents so it's going to be a tremendous asset um, to this board, to the administration, and anybody else that wants to know what our policies are. Right, and the public. And, and the we public. Them, they, they can look at. Yeah, you can't. It's very challenging, you know. And so as we go through um, the next round of policies, you know, we'll be we'll we'll be pulling them off of of that master. We'll we'll bring them before you, and then we'll bring them into that document. So everything okay. from here forward, um, there will be absolutely no question where the policies are, what they are, when they've been reviewed. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because we have, I can't tell you how, how much time has been spent trying to get that um, part of the website completed. It's going to serve all of us well. It absolutely will, yep. Well, it's just frustrating knowing that two years ago we went through a lot. Like BCB, we went through. We went through, I mean. But there's no documentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that, that's what I mean. It's not, it wasn't yeah. on there. So they just. They well, noted it on the audit. It's also interesting. I don't know, uh, I don't recall of any audit that they picked up on policies, which is good that they kind of cast their eyes over those too. I don't, I don't recall any of them ever making note of that before, Mike, um, it, when the pa with the past audits we've had. So I did think that was a good one. You know, even, I think it's a whole, especially the one that pertains to us in terms of conflict of interest, the more that we read that, just to protect ourselves in the community, it's beneficial to all of us. So I think yeah. it was it was nice to have that fresh set of eyes, as Susan said, with a different accounting firm to look at different things, to get into the policy, to see that we're where we need to be, so that we can do what's right. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Susan. Are there any more questions on those policies for now? No. Okay. Those will be on the next agenda for um, approval, um, and then. Item number six is, is what we've already talked about. I guess it's the approval of the substitute rate of pay. And we said $80 and $90 respectively for yes. certified, uh, non-certified and certified? Yes. That's for teachers and um, we're still looking at the nursing rates. Yes. And we'll make a, we'll put that on the next agenda. I had sent um, Kim and Amy some information on nursing, nursing rates which are different than teacher rates because of course for nurses you're vying for for people that are also um, in hospitals and you know medical facilities, and, and the rate of pay for those positions are s significantly different. Of course, we should you should always you know be concerned about that we're at market rate, you know, and we're paying yeah. a fair amount for, for work and current amount. Yep. As a practical matter, Susan, do we expect a line of substitutes at the door tomorrow? <laughs> This probably doesn't make the, the, the difference in that. But it, it, no. It, we should do it nonetheless, but it's not going to solve the issue. No, no. This okay. is this is just us reviewing per the policy. Since we've had such problems getting any subs, it, Amy brought up, well, you know, maybe we ought to just even look at that policy. It's not going to matter. I mean, other districts are paying $120 an hour and they they are $120 a day, and they're not getting subs either. So not it's it's a it's a shortage of personnel. Yep. But post-COVID, it yeah. might help because you have UNH right around the corner. Yeah. You have an education department. So we could. And, and, who, and from when we were looking at it, since this policy was adopted in 2008 and was not looked at again until 2019, and we did not make any changes in 2019, I'm 
most likely believing it's been that rate for this entire time. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that it's time for us, you know, post COVID to, to look at, uh, to Mike's point, w making us more marketable. Is it going to change anything in COVID? No, but it'll change something. Yeah, every, every 15 or so years, can you should adjust for inflation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yep. Good deal. Thank you for all the work in, in, in Do you reading those and, and, and getting them before us. Um, yeah, so there's no motion there. So we did do a motion on number six, the approval of the substitute rate of pay. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Amy, you still with us? I am. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimous. And then um, finally, number seven, approval of the support staff MOA, um, which we uh, talked about in our non-meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so the union has, um, so, so the union approached um, the board and the subcommittee of the board met with them. There, there were several items that uh, they brought forward um, uh, that were kind of alterations to normal working conditions. Um, there was great conversation and um, uh, the recommendations were brought forward to their uh, union, they uh, ratified unanimously, and now it's before the board um, for your ratification. I would seek a motion to ratify the MOA as, as just described. So moved. Second. I'll second. Give, give Amy that one remotely. Please. Amy seconded. And um, any further questions or comments? Oh, uh, good to sit down with them, and it was a. Uh, Great discussions. And Thank we're you. grateful for all the employees for all the hard work they're doing. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, the board members that extra time. We appreciate it in, into the negotiating team um, for, the, for, the, for the union. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And um, I'd like to go into non-public very briefly. Um, and just so folks know in, in the audience, when we come out, um, we're not going to have any more action, we'll just adjourn the meeting so there won't be anything, we won't come back out live. So um, so I would seek a motion under RSA 91A, um, colon three, uh, Roman two, uh, A, uh, B, uh, C, and C um, to go into non-public session. So moved. Second. And by roll call vote, uh, Mr. King. Aye. The chair is aye. Ms. Shelton? Aye. Ms. Mr. Swanson? Aye. Ms. Tilton? Aye. Okay, so we are now in non-public at 542. Thanks, everyone.